So you decide you want to switch from steel stays to synthetic stays. Excellent. You've measured everything, you've made the choice, you've got your material, but now it's time to start splicing. What do you do? Well, it's really simple. I'm going to walk you through all the steps to make a synthetic stay. And I'm going to be making a synthetic head stay in this demonstration, but a head stay is the same as all your other stays, just that a head stay has a couple extra things for added chafe protection, because you have those hank on sails just grinding on it all the time. So we're going to beef this guy up so that way it's just going to be bomb proof. So first things first, this is going to be the top of the stay. Now I tied a double constrictor knot and what this guy does is it lets me hold the thimble in place and then send it up the mast. So I hooked the halyard to this guy and sent it up the mast and made sure that the stay at the end was about the length that I want it to be. So it's not the most accurate way to check it, but it's a really good way to check it and just make sure that you're in the ballpark for how long your stay is supposed to be. Now the reason you have to tie it and you can't just do like a quick splice is when you do a splice, the weave opens and then the lengths change. So you can't open the weave at all anywhere before you do all your measuring. So all your measuring has to be completely completed with the line intact and original. So that's why you have to do knots to hold things together. Now that we know this is the length, we can start splicing. So to do any splice in Dyneema, you just push the weave together and you see how the fibers just open right up. And you're just going to work your fid right through there. And now at this point, we can take out the pin because this is a bigger pin. Now I'm going to run the end of the, of the line straight through. And now I'm going to put the little thimble back in there and we'll pull that nice and tight. Now I'm using Sailmaker's thimbles because they're closed and they're prettier. You can do the same thing with an open thimble. These are a lot cheaper. These are a lot nicer. So if you're budget conscious and you don't really have a lot of money to spend, you can use these. I've used these on our on all our other stays and they've been holding up just fine for the past five years. But we're just doing one stay, so I only had to buy a couple of these. So I decided to go with a much nicer one. So this is our first splice. Now when you're splicing a head stay or any synthetic stay, what you wanna be doing is called a Mobius Brummel splice. So what that means is this line got pierced by this one. So it comes around and then goes back through it. Now what you need to do is have this one pierced back through this guy. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna open the weave and you're gonna pass your fid directly through the middle. So you wanna have six strands on either side. You actually wanna come from the other side. Okay. Now you're gonna take the tail and you're gonna pass it through this. So what you're doing is you're loading a twist into the system so that way when you go to the next step, the twist comes right back out. So then your fibers end up straight. So at this point you have where the line comes up, runs around the thimble, comes through itself, goes back, and then through itself again. So this is important. If this layout is any other way, you've done it wrong, you need to go back, you haven't done anything irreversible yet, so just go back at this point and fix it. So now, you're gonna pull this, and it's gonna go through itself. You're gonna see it's gonna twist around and kinda invert on itself. So now you have the twist started. Now what we need to do is to open up the fibers, make the hole bigger, and then we're actually going to fit this whole piece back through there. Now, a little trick, when you have to open up a hole and make it bigger, you take your fid and you put the next size down or next size up, whichever you have handy. You're going to put them end to end 
on their bevels. And then you slip it back in, and then you can work them, and you'll end up squeezing both fids through that hole. With both fids in there, you can get a lot of torque on it. And you can make it a really big hole. Now we're just going to take out the thimble for a moment. And now we're going to feed this eye through the hole. And then we just slide this down and you'll see that twist will just pop right out. And everything's back. And now you can see the fibers are once again back to normal. There's no crazy twist. They just, they keep running along like nothing happened. So why is this called a locking splice? Well, it's simple right here. It's locked. I can't open it any further. In order for the lock, the in order for the splice to come apart, this whole five foot section actually needs to come unbraided and then slip out past this and then slip through. So it's not gonna happen. So with that out, we're just gonna put the thimble back in. And now we need to bury this five foot section we have. So in these cases, I like to just kind of hold and pull along because honestly, I have no idea how far down the line five feet is. Once you start splicing and the weave opens up, it's it all goes away. All your frames of reference are gone. So I'm gonna put the pin in. This is five feet down the line. So I'm gonna go past this point when I'm doing the berry. So we're just gonna open the weave and then just feed it in. I don't usually use tape, but when I have five feet that I need to bury, I'm using tape. So what we're gonna do here is just wedge this into the back of the fid, and we're just gonna tape it in place. Now remember, there's a pin somewhere about five feet down the line. So I'm just gonna keep pushing it until I get there. So here's the pin. Just gonna take it out because now we're in its area. I'm just gonna go a little past the pin. And then we just pop out the side. 
So just open it up, slip the fit out. Now we have this little bit to keep pulling through. Now, I personally like to pull the splice super tight. That way, this is fully loaded. The idea is if the lock has to hold everything, that becomes the weak point. So if you can have the buried tail hold everything, then the lock never actually gets loaded. And if it's never loaded, then it's never under stress, and then everything's a lot stronger. So a Mobius Bromo splice in braking tests is actually weaker than a long berry splice. And the difference between a locking and a long berry is a locking has this locking part. A long berry is literally just come around and pop back in and bury a long tail. The problem with a long berry is if anything goes wrong, it's winter, your rigging's a little slack, something's just jiggling it just right, it can go working its way back out because it's just stuck in so it can slide right back out. So you can do things like locking stitches and all these other things to make it stronger. But at the end, that splice isn't the strongest or safest for your standing rigging. So you want to put a locking splice, that way the splice itself is locked and everything is strong and secure, and then you go from there. Now you're never supposed to get anywhere near the braking loads of this. So the fact that the long berry splice has a slightly higher braking strength than a Mobius Bromo splice is kind of immaterial because before you break one of these stays, you're gonna break something else on your boat because these are going to be the strongest thing on your boat. These are miles stronger than the steel stay you're replacing. I don't really worry about the fact that this makes the whole splice slightly weaker than a long berry splice, but then to make it even less of a concern, by doing a very good berry, this never gets loaded. And if this is never loaded, then you technically have a long berry splice with a lock. So it's added safety on top of safety. So now that it's all the way through, we're gonna take the tape off and pull this guy out. And then we're gonna begin the taper. And tapering is always fun. So fun. So to hold everything in place, I'm just gonna put a fit in here. Okay. So, this part is obviously scrunched together a lot. But this piece is not. So at this point, it's safe to assume that this, being how it's been untouched, is its original length. So you have five feet from the tip to the splice. Now that's important because now we're going to calculate how much we need for the berry and then how much we need for the taper. So we need 25 and a half inches buried, minimum. That's two feet. We have five feet available, so we have plenty. So what I'm gonna do is measure out from the splice 25 inches down the line, which pretty much puts us where we are. So to this point, we have plenty buried. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to count how many strands, I know that sounds tedious, but we're gonna actually count them, how many strands from top to bottom. From there, we're then going to divide it by 11, and then that's going to give us the interval for how many, how, what distance we go before we take out the next strand. It's really long and tedious, but it's for the best. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, we're gonna call it here at 110 because that means that every tenth we pull out and cut it off. So from there, we're gonna go 10 and then we're gonna pull that one out and cut it off. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna pull out not the same line, but an opposing line. Because if you pull from the same line, think about it, you have six that go this way and six that go this way. So if you cut all your lines going this way, that means that your first half is all gonna be cut going counterclockwise. And then at the end, you're only gonna have ones that are curling clockwise. And it, 
it's not the goal that you're looking for. 7, 8, 9, 10. So we're going to cut from the opposing ones. So this one went this way. Now we're going to cut one that goes the other way. So now at this point you have your splice, the buried section, and then the tail that comes really long and ends in a very fine taper. So towards the end, they're just a couple strands. So it's not really a braid, but the important part is it goes from 12 strands very gradually, very evenly, all the way down to just one. And the ending in one is super important because from one, it goes to zero. If you didn't taper it, you would be going from 12 strands to zero. And that would be a very abrupt change for the casing that's over it. And then these strands that are over top of the buried section would actually go along because they're, you know, 12 strands inside of them and then no strands. And that sharp twist, that'll make it break. And that's going to be the weak spot. So if you taper it properly so it comes down very, very gradually, it's honestly the most painful part in the whole thing. Just taper it very well until it's down to just one strand and then you're finished. So we pull out the fid and we're gonna milk it back into its cover. So you just grab here at the end and you're just gonna work the casing. So here we have the splice and you can see it goes from being very thick where it's, you know, 24 strands in essence, because you have 12 on the outside and then 12 buried inside and it tapers itself all the way down until they just disappear. So somewhere in this area, they finish. And that is the goal. You want a very gradual decline from this massive thing back to the original size of the stay. So with this, one end of your stay is done, and this is actually the top end. So now we're going to work on the bottom end of the stay. And that one's going to be a bit more complicated because we're going to be adding the chafe protection on that side. So if you noticed, this was a regular single braid splice, nothing fancy to it, and very straightforward to do. So for the bottom, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be putting a Dyneema chafe sleeve on top of the Dyneema. So it's gonna be a bit of a process. I'm going to actually feed this over the entire length of the stay. So when we did our little test fit, I tied a seizing knot, or I tied a double constrictor knot onto the stay to hold the thimble in place. Well, everything works well. That was the correct position to have it. So I simply mounted, or I simply tied another double constrictor knot uh, right next to it, so really close. So that way when we're splicing, we know where to splice again. And I tied that on really tight, so now we're just gonna take this one off. So here we have the uh, constrictor knot marking where it was, and then this is the mark from where the actual constrictor knot was when we had it put on there. So I'm now going to mark this with a piece of thread. I'm just gonna put a stitch through it. That way when we're working, I can find it again. Because having this constrictor knot's gonna be a little bulky to help feed it through the, uh, through the whole thing. So now we have a little white line that marks where the splice goes. So now I'm just gonna take off this constrictor knot that I just put here and get that out of the way. And we're going to start the really long and tedious process of feeding on the Dyneema chafe sleeve over everything. So we actually start down here at the tail and we're gonna work our whole way up to the very top. With the chafe sleeve put on almost to the end, we end here. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut it we're going to keep this length and this is going to go on the eye. So this will be the chafe sleeve for the eye and this is your stay. And here we are. So this is our point that we want to make our eye splice in. Now all this extra cover we have to actually pull back off. So now that we have this identified and it's easily found, 
we're gonna put a bulkier knot on it. That way we can feel it inside the chafe sleeve and that'll let us know where we're gonna be cutting. So just making sure I can feel it right in here. So it's very subtle, but when you know what you're looking for, you'll feel it. After all that, we see the little bleb here and this is where our knot is. So we're just gonna slightly and gently cut into the cover over the knot. So the knot is acting as protection so that way we don't accidentally cut our stay that we're trying to make. Because that would mean that everything is ruined and you have to start over. So now for the important part. You want this to fit over it perfectly. And just a little bit of excess. So now that we know that this is where the splice is going to go, I'm going to pull out that thread. We're just going to go just a smidge past it. We wrap that on there everything fits well. So I'm just going to push and open the weave. Now it's important to get the chafe sleeve really tight on the stay. If it's loose, then you end up kind of wompy and lumpy and it's not going to be very pretty. Wompy. Wompy. Wompy and bubbly. So now, since we made that mark and we have that hole nice and well presented, I'm going to come back through, but this time I'm going to be piercing through the chafe sleeve as well. So the reason is, piercing through the chafe sleeve is going to pinch it and hold it, so then it can't go anywhere. So now we can really pull it nice and tight, and it's safe. It's locked, and it's stuck. Now we're going to come through again, Okay, just like with the other side, this line comes up, and we're now going to splice back into it, and we're going to make this thing. Now, the reason that I said that we're doing, ah, the reason it's like in between of a single braid and a double braid splice is we're doing a single braid splice, there's no doubt about it, but it's technically double braid because we put a cover over it, but it's only in a tiny area, and we're kind of ignoring that it exists, so... Really, treat it as a single braid with a cover, even though that would technically be double braid. But don't stress out too much. All right, so we got to make this a bit shorter. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to shorten this because, yes, you're treating it as a single braid and yada yada. You have to make sure when you're doing a single braid splice that when you push the weave open, that you're going between the weaves. You can't pierce weave because if you do, you can mess up the splice. 
and I honestly can't get this far enough out of the way to be able to see. So we need to shorten this guy so that way we can, you know, kind of scrunch it up, look up under the skirt, and then pierce it through. So now we have the area opened up, and we can push this out of the way and see what we're doing. So we're just going to push open the weave. And then slip the fid right between those little pieces of Dyneema. And we're going to open the weave really far. With the weave open, remember, comes from the bottom loops around, comes across, loops back down. If you make that pattern, everything works great. If you don't make the pattern, fix it so that you made the pattern. So now, you can see, comes down, comes up, around, up, around, and then back down. So we're going to pull it until it's going to invert on itself. And there we have the tiny little hole. We're going to put the fids in again, and we're going to open that hole up really wide. Now we're just going to take out the thimble, and then we'll feed the whole thing through that hole. Now, you might be wondering, why did I have the thimble in there in the first place? I mean, it's so tight and hard to get it out. If I just kept it out, I wouldn't have to worry about it. Well, the problem is, I want it to be really tight on the thimble. So the best way to make sure that the size is perfect is to have it present. And this is the price you pay for perfection. Thimble is out, kind of squeeze this flat, that way it fits through easier, and you're going to push it through the hole. Now you're going to pull it down, and this twist that you put in is now going to pop back out, and now everything is good again. Now, to make sure that it looks nice, I'm going to make sure that the chafe sleeve pops out under this splice. Just trying to keep it all nice and tight here. Just getting all the chafe sleeve I can out, so that way when I pull it back in, the eye is uh, quite a bit tighter. Alright, and with that, the eye splice is done. So the next thing that's structural that needs to happen is we need to bury this long tail once again. So that's going to be the exact same thing. After we get the tail buried, then we're going to pull the chafe sleeve that's at the other end back up. They're going to meet, and then we're going to cover all of this in seizing and service and all that. So same as before, we're just going to pull this along. And when we get to the chafe sleeve, we're going to push that out of the way. And we'll put the pin in. So once again, the tail is tapered. We're going to milk it back in. So I just start over here. As I pull, as I pull here, 
you can see the cover going over the tail. So the tail is going back into the cover as I pull here. All right, so with that, you have the eye splice with the Dyneema Chafe Sleeve covering it. So that's going to be extra protected. And then we have the Dyneema Chafe Sleeve itself. So now I have to work this all the way back up to here, and that's gonna be hard. So the, the problem is, when you do the splice, you get constructional stretch. You can see this is pretty thick and soft. On the other side, I pulled it up as far as I could and now it's all bunched up here and this is really soft and loose. So now what I have to do is actually load this and get the constructional stretch out. So I'm going to hook it up on the deck with winches and just pry it apart, pull it really tightly until this goes away because I can't work with this. This is, that's way too soft and loose. So once we get that to go down then we can finish smoking the cover over everything and then we'll continue with finishing it up. And now let's look at the entire process of doing the eye splice with the chafe sleeve in time lapse. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.